Now then, plans are being put in place to expand a new museum which celebrates Sikh heritage and culture. The Anglo-Sikh Museum aims to preserve Sikh history through the use of the latest technologies. Well, Gurinder Singh Mann is a historian and the director of the Sikh Museum Initiative and he's joining me on the line now. Good evening, how are you tonight? I'm very well, thank you, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Lovely to have you on the show on Connections today. Could you tell me firstly, please, Gurinder, how did this idea come about? Because because strictly speaking, it's not really a traditional museum in, in that there's the stuff is held it's not held in a building as usual. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, so a couple of years ago, um, our organisation, the Seat Museum Initiative, was actually kind of considering what's the best way to actually go about actually to kind of you know give more information on Sikh history uh, and heritage essentially. And um, the costs involved in a physical museum were kind of beyond our scope essentially. But uh, working with developers, we felt that we could actually employ technology to actually bring about, um, you know, the actual essence of what objects are lying around in the UK, which were traditionally taken from the Punjab. So by using and employing technology, we actually thought that the best way forward would be to actually employ it in using in touch screens on mobiles and tablets and also, you know, through the concept of virtual reality, really. Which is great, which is very forward-thinking, and that, that is the age in which we live in, isn't it? So tell me, Gurinder, what objects have you found so far, and where have you actually sourced them from? Oh, it, well, we've been uh, kind of scouring the country, essentially, um, looking at kind of um, uh, historical sources in terms of where objects have, like I said previously, just where they've come from the Punjab and um, in which museums, but not just museums, but also from private collectors as well, because um, what we find is there is a lot of... Um, objects which have actually wound, found themselves into like private collections for instance so we are working with them as well but essentially uh, we are looking at objects like um, jewellery for instance and we have worked on um, jewellery related to Sophia the Leap Singh which actually came down from the Sikh Empire and we are also looking at things like arms and armour and there'll be other types of objects as well which kind of fits into the whole kind of ethos of what we're trying to project essentially. Yeah because I guess the Sikh culture in, in terms of the religious side of it is quite a young culture isn't it? However, it's a very, very rich culture in, in that short period of time. So which period of history specifically for listeners then does it cover? Well, uh, essentially, we're going we're to be kind of focusing on from the 1800 period onwards, which is actually where Maharaja Ranjit Singh had actually carved out what we call the Sikh Empire. So we're looking at objects which are kind of like created during the Sikh Empire, also during the Anglo-Sikh Wars, which was the wars between the uh, East India Company and the Sikh Empire, and also during the British Raj as well. So roughly covering about from 1800 onwards and possibly just past the 1900s as well. So it does cover about roughly circa over 100 years where we can actually kind of, you know, um, kind of just show that rich Sikh heritage that we have, basically. And what, what's the significance of the items then and, and of the exhibition and the museum? I guess in the context of the wider Sikh story and even our kind of post-colonial story as well in the UK. Yeah, I think essentially that's the whole key idea, you see, because essentially the objects that you probably uh, will be seeing on, on our website, for instance, and can be seen and, uh, and employed is that um, these objects, are some of them are hidden from view. Um, some may even be lost because what we can do is we can actually recreate objects as well, which, you know, people can no longer see. And essentially, you know, the whole idea is to actually tell this story about where objects have actually come from, you know, from this colonial idea of actually taking the uh, Sikh Toshokana, which we call it, which was actually taken uh, from the early 1800s. And then for us to actually recreate all these objects from uh, institutions now in the UK and also from private collectors as well. So how do you actually digitise the artefacts then? Because it, kind of, it does sound like the kind of thing that would be very meticulous and a real labour of love, I think, for someone. So how, how does the process work? Well, uh, there's two ways we do this. One is that we do actually employ kind of um, digitisation machines, uh, you know, handheld scanners as well, and um, using special lighting, we can actually scan objects all the way around. That's what we call a, a one approach. We can actually also... 3D model objects just from photographs itself. So where the object is no longer available or is not, of, you know, we can't have access to it, for instance, we can actually recreate the model, but it's not as good as the digitization process. But it does involve actually, um, you know, several hours of work per object. But essentially, once the object has been created, it almost looks as good as the real thing. It sounds fantastic. How can people find out more then, Gurinder? Well, essentially, what we've done is we've, uh, we launched um, a couple of weeks ago um, here in Leicester, and um, people can log on to anglosikmuseum.com, 
And on the actual website itself, there's a section called Relics, and each object is available at this moment in time. So all they need to do is just log on, click on the object, and with their mouse, for instance, if they're on a PC, they can move the object around. If they're on tablets, if they're on their phones, for instance, as well, they can look at the objects, they can make them bigger, smaller, and then you can zoom in as well, which is absolutely fantastic, really, because, um, you know, it's, this does differ from, you know, the traditional way of actually looking at objects and gives you a kind of this wow factor when you look at objects that are real close up, really. So I'll give you that website again. It's www.com. Angloseatmuseum.com. That's great, Gorinda. And just one quick question as well. What if someone's got an artifact lying around at home, something val- you know, that's valuable to them, it could be sentimentally valuable in other ways, that they think might actually have a place in the museum? Can they actually get in touch with you and well, offer it up to be digitised? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, whilst we have like a set number of 20 objects that we are um, kind of considering in our first phase, there is no harm in um, private collectors or even public institutions get in contact with us. And the, and the email address is info at seekmuseum.org.uk. I'll say that one more time. Info at seekmuseum.org.uk. And by all means, we're always uh, you know, happy to discuss you know, kind of projects with uh, individuals at all times, really. Thanks, Gorinda. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Wish you the very best of luck with the project. Thank you for joining us on Connections today. Thank you. Plans are being put in place to expand a new museum which celebrates Sikh heritage. The Anglo-Sikh Museum aims to preserve Sikh history through the use of the latest technologies. Gurinder Singh Man is a historian and the director of the Sikh Museum Initiative and joins you now on BBC Radio Nottingham. Hello. Hello, good evening. How are you? Hi. So, yes, thank you so much uh, for your time. So how did the idea come about for this? Well, essentially, um, our organisation, the Sikh Museum Initiative, was actually looking at ways in which we can actually interact and kind of, you know, get, um, say, the younger audiences actually interested in Sikh history and heritage as well. So um, the budget for an actual physical museum was was going to be beyond our kind of uh, capabilities, in a sense. So we started looking at digital technologies, in a sense. And um, this involved looking at things like augmented reality, virtual reality, and 3D modelling as well. And um, between 2016 and 2017, we actually undertook a project on the anglo Sikh Wars where we first demonstrated what new technologies can do within a museum context. So that's where the idea is originally generated from, and now this is the next step in terms of actually making these objects available onto a website. Mm. Well, it's uh, it's very modern, and it's definitely where the times are going, isn't it? So uh, you're on to you're on the right lines there, by the sounds of it. Um, so, what sort of objects have you found so far? Well, essentially, uh, we've been working with various museums across the country and private collectors as well. So we are looking at digitising um, swords, um, different types of arms and armour, for instance jewellery, for instance, we've been linking in the Sikh empire from the 1800 onwards uh, with these objects. So we're even also linking in with uh, Sophia Dalip Singh, who's a great suffragette as well, with these objects. But something really important is we are actually working with the Nottingham Museum Service as well, and we've already looked at some of the objects in their collections. Um, out of them, we will be actually making them a, a couple of those objects available online on our anglo Sikh Virtual Museum as well. OK. Um, and where, where have these sort of objects come from then? So, like I said, um, it's from various different museums. Like I said, we are going to be working with the um, Nottingham um, Museum Service. We've been working with Maidstone Museum. We're working with Ancient House Museum in Setford. And a lot of private collectors as well who have actually amassed uh, a number of objects over the years are now actually saying to us, well, OK, we're kind of willing to actually let you digitise these objects so they can become you know, more widely available as well. So how significant is it to to have these objects and to have them sort of on display in this way in this new sort of museum? Well, OK, we've got to look at this uh, project in a different um, kind of way as to uh, in, in, in relation to a traditional museum. So what we can do is these objects will be available 24-7. You can do different things with these objects. You can move them around and learn a bit more about their history. But the significance is that some of these objects might not be available in the, in the near vicinity or some of these objects may be lost as well. So essentially what we can do is we can actually recreate objects which no longer exist either, which is a very, very important tool if, you know, for argument's sake, you know, some of these objects were, to, were going to be lost in the future. How do you kind of digitise these artefacts? And is it a case of like taking a picture and kind of uploading them? How does it work? Um, it's a bit more complicated 
than that. Um, <laughs> so essentially, we do actually have 3D scanners where we can actually scan objects. And um, after we're scanning them, then you need to actually work on the detail of these objects. But also, we can use photographs as well, but it's not simply a case of just photographing a, an object. It has to be photographed from different sides, and then still it's a couple of hours of work for each object to make sure it's actually is available in a 3D model, which can be seen from different areas and angles as well, essentially. Interesting. Uh, hence the sort of new technologies. Mm. Mm, OK, uh, so how can people find out more about this museum? Well, essentially, uh, we actually uh, launched just a couple of weeks ago here in Leicester at the New Walk Museum. But um, in order for people to actually access these um, objects, they need to log on to www.angloseatmuseum.com. And when they go onto the relics page, they'll be able to see these objects and they can access these objects um, on their mobile phones, um, tablets, and also on um, you know PCs as well. And I'll give you that website address again, www.angloseatmuseum.com. Gurinda, thank you so much for uh, telling us more about that. Uh, that is Gurinda Singh Man, who is a historian and the director of the Sikh Museum Initiative. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.